Number 10. A 17 meter high and 11 meter long wall under construction and its bracing are shown in figure 9.31. The wall is in stable equilibrium without the bracing but can pivot at its base. Calculate the force exerted by each of the 10 braces if a strong wind exerts a horizontal force of 650 newtons on each square meter of the wall. Assume that the net force from the wind acts at a height halfway up the wall and that all the braces exert equal forces parallel to their lengths. Uh, neglect the thickness of the wall. All right, uh, so here's the uh, picture from the text. It's essentially a side view. We're gonna have this net force of the wind acting on the middle of the wall, right halfway up its height, as it told us, the height was 17 meters. 8.5 meters up is where that net force then will be acting. We're gonna have 10 of these braces. Okay, they only show one in the picture, but obviously the other 10 will be right behind that front one. Um, and they tell us a certain angle, all right? Uh, here I drew a front view of the wall, 17 meters high, 11 meters wide. Um, here the, remember they told us it's a 650 Newton force that is acting on each square meter of the wall. And I just happened to chose this halfway up point and this is where the net force is going to act. Um, so first, if they told us, right, the uh, force per square meter, in order to find the total force, I would have to find all of the square meters, right? So I'd have to essentially create little boxes uh, in this rectangle. Uh, the other way to look at it is to remember that to find the total square footage of this rectangle, it's just the area, right? It's just going to be the length times the width of the height, okay? So area then will simply be length times width. And then to find the total force, it would simply be then that area, right? That area multiplied then by the force per area, which they told us was 650 Newtons. So right here already, we can see that for the total force, we already have a nice little formula, right? Length times width times then the force per area. And we know all four, uh, excuse me, all three of these variables, and therefore we could find the total net force that is acting at the center of the wall here in the front view, right? We can think about it as uh, a vector pointing into the page there. And on the side view up here on the upper right, it's gonna be this vector. Okay, now they tell us, take a look at this picture up here. They tell us that the wall pivots about its base. So therefore right here, I'm gonna draw a little dot and this wall here that I'll draw a vertical line on is allowed to pivot about its base. Uh, so this is starting to look like maybe a torque problem, right? So if, it, if this wall is able to pivot about its base, it could rotate, right? In either particular direction, depending upon the forces. Now, obviously it's static, so there's gonna be no rotation, but I think, you'll, I think it's easily noticed that uh, it could, if the forces weren't balanced, given that this is the pivot point. Okay, so let me do this. What I'm gonna do is basically just draw this, instead of having all these numbers all over the place, I'm just gonna draw this uh, little pivot point along with its arm. Right, that's the wall. Now I'm going to draw the force of the wind, okay, as my vector on this little diagram over here. I'm gonna draw it though where the arrow, uh, the tail of that vector is on the line. And this is the total force, right, of the uh, wind. And that is located a distance of uh, R away, right, the lever arm away from the axis of rotation. We know what that is. They told us it's 8.5 meters, right, halfway up the wall, just like it is in this picture, right, halfway up the wall. Okay, now um, we have 10 of these braces. Okay, let me change the color. We have 10 of these braces now. And in terms of, you know, my little picture over here, uh, these braces are going to be supplying a force that counteracts the force of the wind. So what direction will this force be pointing? Will it be pointing up this way, or will it be pointing down that way? I think that makes sense. It's gonna be pointing up to that direction, correct? So what I'm gonna do in my picture over here, I'm gonna start the tail of that vector at the same location of that total force, all right, halfway up the wall. That's where it tells us they're located. And um, what I also now know is they also tell me this angle in here. Now they did give you the angle 35, right? Uh, this interior angle here. And, but if you were to extend this line on up, you see that those are just alternate interior, right? Or whatever the name is. I don't even think it's alternate interior. I forgot, but I think, right? I, I think that makes sense. Um, this angle in here should be the same as that angle. 
and then these two angles are congruent to one another as well. All right, so moving forward, we know that this is 35. Okay, uh, now uh, we know that we have 10 of these. Okay, so just keep that in mind. There are 10 of these vectors. I'm only drawing one, but there's really 10 of them uh, in terms of I'll just write equal to the number of them. And uh, this vector has a certain force, right? Or that, or I should say that vector represents a certain force. And guess what? That's what we're looking to find, okay? So now knowing that this is essentially a torque problem and that it is in equilibrium, we can now create our uh, torque equilibrium formula that says that the sum of the torques will equal zero. Okay, how many torques are there? Well, I guess there's 10, you know, technically there's 11, right? 10 of these and one of those. Um, actually, there might be more because they told us the net force acts here. But in any case, we're just going to break it up into two, right? 10 of these, which we'll consider one group, and then one of this. Okay, so I'll call this um, the one in red. Let's call that torque. It doesn't really matter. Let's call it torque number two. And let's call this one in yellow torque number one. Now, if you look at the force vectors, okay, like the one in yellow here, what way would that force vector rotate this black uh, line? Well, if it were to act, it would rotate it kind of in the counterclockwise direction, correct? Therefore, this will be positive. And then how about this force? Well, pointing that way, it would rotate it clockwise. So therefore, this force uh, or this torque over here, number two, would be negative. So plugging that into the formula now, we have T1 minus T2 is equal to zero. Okay, let's expand on these variables. So remember torque is equal to the lever arm multiplied by the force multiplied by the sine of the angle uh, between basically that lever arm and, or I should say the force and the uh, axis of rotation. Okay, that, that whole black line there. So uh, expanding on these now, I have R1, F1, sine of theta one, uh, minus R2, F2, sine of theta 2 equals 0. Okay, now um, remember we have how many forces, how many braces are there? There are 10. So this formula right here represents only one of them, correct? So therefore if I had to uh, figure out how do I get 10 into this equation, basically I can just stick it on in here, right? Another way to rewrite this then would be R1 times 10 F1 because there is 10 braces, therefore there are 10 forces. We are tasked to find the force of each one times the sine of theta one minus R2 F2 sine of theta two is equal to zero. So technically, I mean this equation technically for this problem, not that it's not right, but it has to include the 10 in order to, um, to calculate that the force on each one. So this is really, the equation now I'm going to look to simplify. Remember, we're after this, so all we have to do now is some algebra. Let's get everything on over to the other side, okay? Add this term on over to the right. That would leave us with R1 times 10 F1 times sine of theta 1 will equal then R2 F2 sine of theta 2. And then you're going to divide out the R1, 10, and sine theta 1 over to this side. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite that over here, just so I can save a little space. So this is R1. Actually, I'll write the 10 first, okay? Just looks a little nicer. So 10 times R1 times then the sine of theta 1. Okay, and what then I'm going to do now is just erase this and just write F1, because that was the only thing that was left on that left-hand side. F1. So here it is. This is the formula, okay? Now you have to ask yourself, what are the values for each? Well, uh, R2, remember here's my torque two, that's all right in red. I have all the values there. Here's the lever arm length, 8.5, all right? So I know that value, F2 is the total force, right? And the total force was what I calculated over here, so that looks beautiful. So why don't we start plugging in those variables? All right, F1 will then be equal to, no. so now if I were to expand on this a little bit, actually, you know what I'll do? Let me just erase this a little bit in here, all right? And instead of writing F2, now I'm gonna write LWFA. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that. I'm gonna rewrite the sine theta two, don't worry. So this is times L times W times FA times then sine theta two. 
So all I did was I took this from this equation, substituted it in for f t. Okay, so now that's our equation. All right, so we know the length, we know the width, we know the force per area, uh, sine theta 2, right? The angle here for the torque 2 is 90 degrees. I don't know, that's a weird 90 degree sign. It's 90 degrees. All right, and then R1 is again, and I didn't draw that in here. Um, so R1 will be, if, if I mean, if you have to think about what the R value is, it will be the same as 8.5 here. Okay. And then we're going to take that and multiply it by um, the sine of that angle, okay? Remember the angle is always going to be, you can always consider this as the acute angle, all right, between the force applied and the arm. All right, uh, so I have everything I need. So now all we need to do is just plug it all in. So F1 will equal, let me give myself a little more space. F1 will equal. R2, there it is, 8.5. Length, 10 meters, uh, excuse me, 11 meters. Height, or width, well, I, I messed, yeah, that's fine. Width, 17, doesn't really matter what you call which. Uh, force per area was 650 newtons. And then sine of theta 2, remember theta 2 would be the angle between these two, and that is simply uh, 90 degrees. Remember, sine of 90 is 1, so I'm just going to leave a 1 there. That's all divided by now, 10 times R1. Remember R1 was again the 8.5 value over here, same value because both forces are originating at the same place on the arm. So this is 8.5. Okay, so let's plug in that value. So that's 8.5. And then multiply then by the sine of 35 degrees, as I explained before. Now, let's calculate. That's all we gotta do. So 8.5 times 11 times 17 times 650, all divided by parentheses 10 times 8.5 times sine of 35. And there it is. So here we get a value of now 2.12, uh, 2.12 times 10 raised to the fourth, times 10 raised to the fourth newtons. And that is the force on each of those uh, 10 braces. If you had to find the total force, right, it would just be that value we just found to be 2.12 times 10 to the fourth multiplied by 10. All right, so basically 2.12 times 10 to the fifth. All right, guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. All right, I hope this video helped. If it did, that'd be awesome if you could subscribe and maybe even hit a like. Um, we just hit, I think, 100 subscribers, so it's so cool. We're so grateful for your uh, viewership. And we, uh, we really do hope that we are helping you guys. And through some of the comments, I feel like we are. So it makes us very happy. And uh, I really do hope uh, you find this helpful. So guys, thank you so very much. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.